Until recently, the Parisian suburb of Traps was famous for producing some of France's brightest stars, including footballer Nicolas Anelka and comedian Jamal Debaus. But this weekend, it gained notoriety as the site of the latest Burka ban controversy. At the heart of the recent protests is a concern over systemic and institutionalized racism in France's establishment and the unwillingness on the part of politicians and sections of the media, to confront it. The disturbances began following the ID check of a woman wearing the face veil. What ensued remains unclear, with dramatically diverging testimonials from police and eyewitnesses. There are persistent allegations that French police use excessive force, particularly in their dealings with residents of France's impoverished and marginalised suburbs. The police claim face veil clad Hayar, who was accompanied by her mother, husband and four-month-old baby resisted the check and that her husband reacted violently, assaulting an officer. Official sources present the resultant protests as opposition to the enforcement of the 2011 ban on face veils by Islamic militant elements. For her part, Hayar claims she and her husband, 21-year-old Michael, were the victims of excessive force used by bigoted police officers. Eyewitnesses confirm Hayar's testimonial that she was violently dragged by her hair and pinned against a police car. Her husband intervened and was handcuffed. Both Hayar and eyewitnesses deny police claims that the couple were violent towards police officers. According to Samba, a representative for the Association of Residents of Traps, a North African woman who attempted to intervene was told to sod off, you dirty Arab, by officers present. Following the incident, around 200, mainly, peaceful protesters, including women and children, gathered outside the local police station on Friday evening, objecting to the treatment of the couple and to the unwillingness of the local police station to hear a complaint over the behavior of the officers. What is certain is that a minority of protesters clashed with police officers who responded in full riot gear, using tear gas. A 14-year-old boy suffered a serious eye injury and a police officer was injured. Six people were arrested, three of whom have since been handed sentences ranging from 10 to 6 months. One of those arrested ended up with 15 stitches, head injuries and a broken leg, all of which he claims occurred at the hands of seven police officers who assaulted him without provocation. In a visit to Traps on Monday, Interior Minister Manuel Valls was intercepted by a woman who expressed the distress of the residents and concern over a two-tier system in which police violence goes unchecked. Highlighting the current gulf separating politicians from some of France's most marginalised communities, Valls responded by chastising the woman for questioning the police force's integrity. Despite the serious nature of the allegations, as well as the injuries sustained, Valls has publicly stated that he is in no doubt that the police did their job perfectly. This, despite persistent allegations that French police use excessive force, particularly in their dealings with residents of France's impoverished and marginalised suburbs. France has yet to have an equivalent to the Stephen Lawrence case, a watershed moment in which the entire police force is made to confront its racist elements. A 2009 Amnesty International report highlighted how allegations of unlawful killings, beatings, racial abuse and excessive use of force by France's police officers are rarely investigated effectively. Despite accusations of gross human rights violations, often against ethnic minorities, officers are seldom brought to justice. Just last year, 30-year-old Wiesam El Yamna fell into a coma and died in police custody following a forceful arrest. It has been a year, and no police officer has been put on trial or has even faced a judge. No explanations have yet been offered on why Wiesam's body showed bruises, red marks around his neck as well as fractures. Also last year, residents of Alnay Subois accused the police of complicity in the death of 25-year-old Christian Lambert during a stop and search. Although official reports claim he died of a heart attack, Friends point to the excessive use of force by officers on the day which they felt was partly to blame. Allegations of police brutality are not uncommon in France's poorest neighborhoods where the police are often viewed as a violent instrument of state repression, subduing the poorest and most marginalised, with little accountability. Just days before this most recent incident, 
residents of Alne Subwa complained of the police's heavy-handed tactics during Bastille Day celebrations on July 14, in which municipal employees claimed to have been beaten by officers. These incidents are indicative of the tense relationship between residents of certain neighborhoods and some of the officers charged with policing the areas. Just days after the disturbances in traps, French Muslim website Alcans posted screenshots from an unofficial police Facebook forum, Forum Police Info, in which officers expressed racism and violent intent including a call to empty your munitions in traps and watch out for cameras and take no prisoners as well as support for the far right. Spent the night in traps, poor France, long live Blue Marine, one post read, in reference to National Front leader Marine Le Pen. The page has since been taken down, as has the profile of one of the officers who appeared to have been present in traps, but the feeling that officers are often racist and bigoted prevails. Politicians and sections of the French media have framed the incident as reflecting tensions over the ban on face veils, however Hayar states she has previously been stopped because of her face veil and no trouble resulted. Clashes erupt in France over veil ban. Although the ban on face veils is perceived in some circles are another opportunity to stigmatize Muslims, recent events reflect far deeper anxieties over police brutality, an unwillingness among government officials to hear sections of the French citizenry and double standards in the treatment of ethnic minorities who already experience discrimination in many facets of French life, from employment to housing. Vol's statement confirms a widespread sentiment that French citizens who live in impoverished suburbs, be they Muslim or not, don't matter and that violence against them occurs in all impunity. Despite the law banning face veils having been justified on the basis of protecting public order, although there is no evidence it previously threatened it, the law has led to increased discrimination against Muslim women, including acts of violence by vigilantes. With worrying acts of Islamophobia increasingly common in France, including at a legislative level where UMP MPs are now seeking to extend the ban of the headscarf from the public sector to the private sector, many French Muslims feel the authorities are deaf to their concerns. Hayar's offense was no more serious than a minor traffic infraction, but the treatment which she, and others, allege followed is far more serious. In dismissing accounts of police brutality, the authorities are confirming the widely held perception of a system in which residents of poorer suburbs, minorities and Muslims in particular are less worthy of public protection and fair game for stigmatization and violence. France has yet to have an equivalent to the Stephen Lawrence case, a watershed moment in which the entire police force is made to confront its racist elements. In response to the events in traps, Valls insisted there is only one law in this country, a law Burka-clad women could not be absolved from obeying. It is time for an independent inquiry which can help heal the chasm in French society by vindicating victims of police abuse and reassuring the residents of traps and elsewhere that indeed, there is only one law and that no one stands above it. Not even the police.